Hello, my name is Emma, and I will be doing the second negative construction. Um, in response to the negative, or in response to the affirmative <coughs> claims that drug possession or use conviction should be diverted to drug rehab rather than imprisonment, I will be addressing their workability or the workability of their claim and possible disadvantages. Um, first of all, uh, I'd like to point out that it is our claim that focusing on rehab will actually fail to reduce the rate of drug use. This is um, this is an issue for three possible reasons, being that drug addicts lack the incentive and means to seek treatment. Um, the three reasons they lack incentive and means to seek treatment are that one, private health insurance doesn't cover substance abuse, two, addicts have a difficult time completing treatment on their own, and three, treatment centers are incredibly costly. Um, on the point that private health insurance doesn't cover substance abuse, the National Alliance on Mental Illness found in um, a 2014 study that private insurance companies often deny coverage for substance abuse treatment. In New Jersey, just 10% of substance abuse admissions were covered by private health insurance. Um, on the second <coughs> point, addicts have a difficult time completing treatment on their own. We have testimonial evidence from a psychiatrist who works regularly in jails, prisons, homeless clinics, and drug treatment programs. This psychiatrist stated that most addicts have no interest in treatment, and the ones who do it often have so many other problems, including head injuries, PTSD, <coughs> severe child abuse, and more, uh, that they would find it nearly impossible to stay in treatment on their own. Um, on the third point, that treatments are costly, it was found by uh, in a study by the Washington Post that treatment centers are often prohibitively expensive, overcrowded, underfunded, and subject to Byzantine government rules. Health insurance coverage is stingy to non-existent. In this study, they focused on a young woman who countless times was caught by her family um, in, in just in heroin. Um, because she couldn't be sent to jail because she hadn't been arrested for anything, her mother attempted to place her in prison in um, rehab. Unfortunately, she didn't follow the rules of rehab and she was kicked out and now owes that rehabilitation center $3,000 that she can't afford to pay. Um, the second point on that <coughs> rehab to fail to reduce the rate of drug use is that rehabilitation is not always effective. Um, in a study done by Alcohol Rehab, um, the Alcohol Rehab Rehabilitation website, it was found that post-treatment relapses are incredibly common. Their statistic is that drug and alcohol rehab, um, pe people, uh, the percentage of people who relapse after a period of recovery ranges from 50% to 90%, um, going to show that once they've entered into rehab, finished the program, and gone out, it is unlikely that they will remain sober. Moving on to the disadvantages of their argument. Um, first of all, lax drug laws often encourage drug use. <coughs> in, um, criminalization has been shown to deter drug use um, by showing, by planting the idea in society that drug, that drug use is wrong and unhealthy. In a study done by uh, the, in a paper called Hopelessness, Drug Control, and Potential Solutions, it was found that 70% of high school students in New Jersey and 60% of those in California said that fear of getting in trouble with the law was a primary reason not to use drugs. Conversely, decriminalized drugs draw addicts from other, have the potential to draw addicts from other countries, which was shown in a real life situation in Switzerland in a study called The Experience of Foreign Countries and Drug Legalization. In the study, it was found that the number of addicts jumped from a few hundred in 1987 to over 20,000 by early 1992 after lax drug laws were instated in the country. Approximately 20% of these addicts were foreigners who came to the country to take advantage of, the, of their lax drug laws. Um, further evidence suggests that restrictive drug laws have been effective in countries like Sweden, where um, they offer, a, where after the 1990s, when they faced a rising issue with drug use, the government tightened drug control, stepped up police action, mounted a national action plan, and created a national drug coordinator. The result was that drug use became just a third of the European average. 
to reiterate um, our points on their significance, the severity of drug laws directly affects the, affects the rate of drug use. Data from a 2008 national survey on drug use and health showed that marijuana is less used than alcohol and tobacco. Also, 59% of 10th graders think it is harmful to smoke marijuana regularly compared with the 43% um, for smoking one to five cigarettes a day and 34% for taking one or two drinks a day. This evidence goes to show that when a drug has been made illegal, it is less likely to be used, and when it is, and when it is made legal, it becomes a social norm. Um, on, the second, on our second point, that those incarcerated for drug abuse are statistically more likely to commit other sorts of crimes, it was found by the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse that in 2006, 78% of violent crimes were related to either drugs or alcohol. Rehabilitation programs are of. Uh, uh, finally, I would like to reiterate that various rehabilitation programs are already in place for such actions and we still have the same levels of incarceration for drug abuse.